All right, guys, it's been a while, but thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And of course, thanks for subscribing and sticking with us. It's been a long time since we released an update on this YouTube channel. And that's primarily because Tesla has not released a new version of FSD or anything notable until now. So it's been a lot of heads down time at Tesla. Hopefully it's gonna bear some good fruit in terms of new FSD features and functionality. And again, new software functionality like we're getting right now. Uh, but that's where we've been. We've been now sort of out of commission with FSD and Tesla just because they've been heads down, we're waiting on them. All right, but well, we've got the latest version of the main, uh, main branch features, which is the spring update for 2025, which brings a lot of cool features for the new cars, but obviously some as well for the older cars. So as you all know on this channel, if you don't know, if you're new to the channel, we have hardware four um, car and we also have a hardware three car, hardware three with Ryzen. That's what we're in right now, our Model X hardware three with Ryzen. And we have our AI four or hardware four car as well. Okay, so we're able to test both the latest and greatest and we're also able to test what Tesla is including for legacy vehicles. So right now we've got the latest build, which is actually going out to all hardware three cars with FSD and hardware four cars without FSD. So if you have a subscription of FSD on hardware four and you cancel that subscription, you should be able to get this update, but it should re-enable re with uh, version 13.2.8. And if you are on hardware three, it's going to have the latest version 12, which will be version 12.6.4. Okay. But if you have FSD, like if you paid for it and you don't have a subscription, uh, you're likely not going to get this update right now. I think they're trying to include an, a new FSD version before rolling it out to all of hardware four. So again, hardware four without FSD is getting this and hardware three with FSD is getting this. And what you get is going to depend on what car you have. If you have hardware four, you're going to get all the features. If you have hardware three, you're going to get some of the features. So we're going to go over them right now. So this update officially is 2025 14.1, but technically this is 2025 14.3. So this is a, a bug fix version of the initial release. So they went to dot one, dot two, and now they're at dot three now, which should include more cars and a wider rollout. Okay. So this particular one is going to release some really cool features and finally giving some love to the Model S and Model X, right? As well as some of the hardware three cars. So what we have here first and foremost is the blind spot camera on the driver screen. This is super cool. Something we've been asking for for years. If you go back to some of our older videos, we made some recommendations of how they could put that type of thing in the, in the, uh, in the, in the instrument panel here. Uh, but they hadn't done it for years and years and years for, for both the older legacy models, as well as the new refresh models, which are also somewhat legacy to some extent, especially if you have hardware three. But the idea behind this is that you could basically turn on the, the uh, turn signal and it shows the feed here. And you have the option to go in here, go to display and choose whether you want it on the center display or whether you want it on the instrument panel, whichever makes sense. I've gotten so used to the center display. Um, I kind of like it like this, but I also prefer it like this because this is what I've been asking before for so long. The downside to this feature is that because it's trying to fit within the guise of this uh, display here, which is technically only like right here, um, you it limits some of the visibility to the right. So if you notice right now, I'm next to a car and in the screen, I can see his wheel. But if I switch over to the center display, I can see up to his, his door, his, his uh, rear, rear door. So you're missing some visibility in that regard. Cool to see, but again, I'm interested to see what it would look like depending on how you how you drive, uh, what you look for, how you have your mirror set up, whether this is going to be um, helpful or hurtful to have it in the instrument panel. For us, we've been trying it out for a little bit, testing it out. It seems to work fine. Um, There's a difference in speed where it kind of fades out. See how it fades out, fades in. Whereas the screen is a little faster. It just kind of pops up on the screen, but it kind of fades in for the instrument panel. So there may be some delay, which could cause problems. Um, over time, I'm not sure. But again, once you use it, you'll get to see if it's good for you. And I think, again, it's really helpful for us because we're able to do that. We can go left or right, right or left. But that fading animation, I think, is it could be problematic in terms of the latency versus having it here where it just switches. I guess it's the same. I guess, you know, there's something happening. So there's a transition. So I guess it's the same. But this seems snappier than this seems that way because it's fading versus sliding but again could be just be subjective you be the judge of it you try it out for yourself you see what it, you see what it's like so that's the first thing here super cool 
great of Tesla to include Model S and Model X after all this time being left and left by the wayside and everybody focusing on sing the single screen experience. I'm happy they're dedicating some focus to the dual screen experience, which again, in my opinion, is the, is the superior experience. All right, next thing we have is alternative trip plans uh, when you have long trips. So if you have a longer trip, if you're gonna go to, I guess, Philadelphia, let's try Philadelphia. Um, yeah, let's just go here. Uh, you now have some trip options for you. Let's see if it pulls up for us right here and tells us what it is. But the idea is that for long trips, you'll be able to set and see these different filters for what trip is gonna yield the best result for you. So you want the fastest time, do you want the best amenities, right? So if you wanna stop at this cool restaurant or these different, you know, longer charge stops with open and highly rated restaurants, cafes, restrooms, and shopping within distance, or do you want the fastest time to get there? Now, if I go longer than that, if I cancel this and go to Florida, now of course I can use, I'm gonna use voice commands, but just for the purposes of this, I'm gonna put this here, Miami, Florida. Now, if I put something like this in place, after it calculates a longer trip, then I should get more results, more ability to sort of cycle through and see what uh, what options I have. So now I have fastest, best amenities, and fewer stops. So best amenities and fewer stops versus fastest, and it'll, it'll route that automatically for you. So this is great, just helping you uh, sort of get acclimated with, um, you know, the different ways in which you can travel, making it easy for you to travel long distances within the supercharger network. So this is really, really cool. Other thing is avoid highways. I kind of always thought this was always there, but apparently it wasn't in the in the menu here, but it was always a, a, an option. When you put in a destination, you could press the three dots and say avo avoid tolls. Um, and that's probably what it was. But this one specifically calls out highways. Now that I say it, I, <laughs> now that I say it, I remember it. It was avoid tolls, not avoid highways. So this is specifically avoiding highways. Pretty straightforward. The other one is save trunk height based on location. Nothing big here, um, but it's, by, it's location based, similar to for the Model S and X the air suspension where you can save the air suspension to raise uh, on certain locations. This is now for the trunk to raise or to open to a certain height at certain locations. Different languages for keyboards, which is great for people who don't speak the language, don't necessarily have to be in that country, but they could be in America, but they prefer a different language. They, they prefer their native language and they wanna be able to do that. So that's great that we have new, new languages on the keyboard here. This is a big one, controversial one. Tesla took this away. Uh, didn't give anybody the option to stop them from doing it, but basically had you had power accessories where you had the outlets in the car, specifically the Model X, uh, where you could keep on and every and in the USB outlets as well. Um, you can keep those ports on and they were always on when you turn off the car and it would just effectively run the risk of draining the battery. But they didn't give us the option, so they took it away. Now they're giving it back and now it says use or charge your devices through low voltage outlets, USB ports or inductive phone chargers after exiting the vehicle, as long as the battery is above 20%. So that's the buffer they're gonna put in here to limit you from hurting your battery or damaging your battery or putting yourself in a precarious situation. Uh, but that's pretty cool to have. So you can turn this on. Uh, let's go to controls, charging. And then you have that option, keep accessory power on. And obviously it'll give you the little warning as well. So that's great. Great to have that there. Great to have that option for those that need it, especially if you, you know, if you got kids, you want to charge the tablet while you're out going to do something. You don't want to charge the tablet to not charge or maybe your ex secondary phone or, what, or your partner's phone or whatever the case may be. You can now charge them with the car or you're outside of the car and the car is locked and not have to worry about anything. So that's cool. A bunch of minor updates. Um, not going to really go into detail with these. I think the big updates, um, you know, we've, we're, we, we talked about one, the other one excuse me, as an undocumented change I'm gonna talk about in just a second. But again, when viewing, these, uh, when viewing a charger location nearby, restaurants, cafes, shops in the walking distance are displayed, media search results are filtered, um, nothing else really of note. Uh, this is an interesting one. In your navigation setting, you can choose to show or hide chargers on the map that are not owned or serviced by Tesla, that's a good one. And if your hotspot is enabled, your car will automatically connect to that hotspot. So that's pretty cool, okay? so that's all that we got hardware three plus Ryzen. There are additional features that you get if you're on hardware four. And when I get that update for hardware four, I wanna show you what that looks like. But for now, I don't wanna talk about it. I'll just focus on what we have for hardware three. The undocumented change here that they've included in this one, and one of the bigger features that everybody was anticipating was the inclusion of the B pillar cameras for the dash cam. In addition to the new dash cam viewer, which is really awesome. We'll pull that up for you right now. 
not documented in the release notes. A full app now comes up with its own icon. Super smooth, nice smooth animations. Before it was very buggy, very laggy. Sometimes it would open, sometimes it wouldn't. It would crash, it would all kinds of things. It was pretty bad. This is super smooth. So first and foremost, it's a new interface. We'll show you the today's event or today's live event, active event right here. It'll also show you the next or the previous event as a next button. It should probably be reversed. It should probably be previous this way because everybody thinks of previous or back going this way as opposed to forward going this way. So this is actually going back in the history to the last event that you were in. And you have some different options for viewing it. You have the grid view, which shows all cameras, super smooth, nice and clean. This is really, really awesome. This feels like they put a lot of time and effort into this versus the initial dash cam view, which was sort of a something that was kind of sprung on the, the Tesla team. For those that don't know, it wasn't a feature that they had already planned. It was something that was kind of like, hey, Elon said, make a dash cam viewer. So they had to kind of put something together to make it happen. And you kind of felt that in just the way that it operated. Uh, they've enhanced it over time, but this has taken it to the next level. Everything is super smooth, super crisp, a couple hiccups here and there, but nothing crazy. But you can just toggle through the cameras very quickly and see what's going on. This is the live one or the active dash cam view. But if I go to a previous one, to an event, immediately jump to the event. So you can jump to the event pretty easy. You can scrub through the timeline. Again, super smooth. You can scrub through it and get to where you need to get to. And again, scrubbing through it with all the cameras. This is super cool, right? So I can see all the cameras at once versus toggling through each one, which is what you had to do before. I can look at just the front. I can look at just the back. I can look at the left and the right. If I have hardware four, I would be able to look at the B pillar. So this whole column, this whole row down here gets kind of gets filled up with cameras. But again, super cool. Jump back to New York. Somebody hanging around the car. I want to check them out. I want to see everything that's going on. So this is really, really good. A really cool feature. I'm glad Tesla included it in a hardware three, three cars. I know some people are going to complain um, about they didn't get the B pillar. I understand. I understand it's a problem. But we're happy that Tesla is still including hardware three. It's not completely irrelevant or obsolete like people like to think it out to be. They're still improving on FSD for hardware three. They're still improving on the UI and giving it new features that it didn't have. And I'm appreciative that Tesla is including those cars or some of these cars, most of these cars as much as they can to be able to do it. Right. Yes, we want the B pillar, but I'm happy we got this. I'd rather have this than to have the old player that didn't work or no updates at all. So I'm happy and appreciative that they included that. All right, so this is pretty much it. All I've seen for Hardware 3 plus Ryzen with the spring 2025 update. Let me know in the comments if you've noticed anything else, any additional features, if you got this update um, and how it's working out for you. Let me know how you think, what you think about the, uh, the blind spot cameras. Let me know how you think about the new player and any other features. Again, I didn't notice anything major here undocumented that, that, that uh, wasn't in the release notes. But if you spot anything, let me know. And until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.